Good morning, you're watching All You Need to Know on Bloomberg Quint. I'm Darshan Mehta. Most of the global markets are bleeding in trade. Uh, the Nikkei is down almost close to 2%. Hang Hong Kong markets are down 1%. And the SX Nifty is indicating a gap down of almost uh, 38 points. It's come off uh, the day's low, but nevertheless, it is expected to be a weak opening. Now, as far as the ADRs are concerned, quite a few of them ended with a negative bias. HDFC Bank to Wipro down anywhere between 1% to 2%. What gained was, you know, some of the IT stocks like, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Dr. Eddy started Motors and uh, ICICI Bank were the gainers in trade. Now, what happened as far as crude is concerned? Crude continues to trade week. A week uh, we are Brent is below the $70 barrel per mark, and what we are seeing is WTI crude is below the $65 barrel per mark. As far as the base metals on LME is concerned, most of them ended with a positive buyer. Copper was up almost eight tenths of a percent, zinc was up half a percent, and nickel was up half a percent. But most of the base metals in China have managed to recover. Steel has managed to move into the green, and aluminium has also managed to move into the green. Most of the precious metals are trading with a positive bias. <clears throat> now, since it's the last day of the financial year, uh, there is significant amount of NAV management that will happen. So FIs and DIs, both of them heavy buyers in the market yesterday. Some of the sectors in focus, you had uh, the nifty mid cap and small cap gaining almost one and a half to two percent. The Nifty Bank managed to move up, the Nifty PSU Bank did well, and the best performing index was the Nifty Metal Index, which was up almost 1.8%. Now, the Wix managed to move up almost 2.3%. The other factors that you need to watch out is how Nifty panned out in trade. Nifty was up 50 points, SBI, TCS, and ICICI Bank were the major contributors, while HDFC and Bharti Airtel uh, contributed on the lower side. But uh, Agam is here with the FNOQs. What are you indicating? What are the Qs indicating, Agam? Well, uh, we have seen uh, you know a lot of traction and uh, pick up in rollovers uh, because uh, when it comes to the Nifty, about 54 percent. Of course, uh, quite naturally, as one might expect, a substantial surge in the April open interest by as much as 40 percent, and it's the same for the Nifty Bank futures as well. When the rollover is standing at around 54 percent, largely in line with the, the previous three-month average. That said, moving in, uh, what we've uh, seen in the, with respect to the India Volatility Index, that's moved up around 2.3 percent at 15.5. The Nifty put call ratio remains largely unchanged at 1.15. Uh, with respect to changes in open interest across different strikes and options, uh, we've seen the most activity at the 10,000 strike where we saw unwinding of the 10,000 put as well as the 10,000 call. Uh, but uh, in, to talk about stocks, uh, two counters move into the FNO band. So we have Baram Purcini and GMR Infra. And on the other hand, we have Jet Airways and Oriental Bank, which moves out of the FNO band. Uh, we're also keeping an eye on Pidalite, which across all series has seen fresh longs. On the other hand, Cummins India has seen fresh shorts across all series. Of course, we've seen unwinding in the March series for both these counters. That said, moving in, uh, a big update with the morning, uh, this, this morning, which China has confirmed that uh, uh, North Korea leader Kim Jong-un uh, visited uh, Xi Jinping. The conversation between the two in Include, uh, included um, North Korea's nuclear weapons and its meeting with the U.S. Uh, Bloomberg's Stephen Engel has this report. Listen in. Uh, well, we do know, according to Xinhua News Agency, now reporting along with the Nikkei newspaper here in Japan, that uh, Kim Jong-un did go to China uh, apparently for three days, from March 25th to the 28th. We thought it was a one-day visit. Uh, and he did meet with uh, President Xi Jinping in Beijing, according to Xinhua. And also, according to the Nikkei, he met with uh, Vice President Wang Qishan, as well as uh, Yang Jiechi, a senior diplomat, uh, among others, of course. Uh, and there's some interesting headlines f passing now across the Bloomberg terminal, uh, basically saying that uh, Kim made an informal visit uh, to China between March 25th to 28th. So it was not a state visit. Also uh, basically saying, uh, she says China-North Korea ties shouldn't and will not change, and they uh, need to have regular uh, re regular talks as well, willing to hold dialogue uh, with the U.S., North Korea telling China that they are willing to have dialogue with the United States. Also, uh, we're learning that Kim Jong-un's wife traveled with him on that train uh, to that China visit. Uh, and uh, again, more headlines. She says he's willing to keep regular contact with Kim and China sticking to Korean Peninsula denuclearization. So again, China uh, pressing hard on that issue that uh, denuclearization is the 
the ultimate goal. What was the meaning or the meaning of this visit? Well, obviously, ahead of the Donald Trump uh, planned uh, summit uh, by the end of May, China does not want to be left out of this process. And I'm sure Kim is, uh, like his father did, seeking advice from uh, Beijing on just how to talk with the United States and, of course, with Donald Trump. Focus is yet again on an infra stock. Stock of the day today is MEP Infra after the company has bagged three ham projects from NHAI for a sum of around 2,921 crore. Uh, this is in joint venture with Longshan Road and Bridge Company. Uh, the company has emerged as the preferred bidder for three ham road construction projects. Uh, these projects include four laning of Osa Chakur, Chakur Loha, and Loha Varanga lines. And uh, the construction period is for 730 days, uh, along with the construction period. Is 7:30 days, and the concession period is for 15 years. The company is expected to receive an upfront buy annuity from NHAI post the commencement uh, commercial operation date. Uh, in a separate development, uh, a day or two prior, uh, MEP uh, Infra operated Bandra Worley ceiling toll is also expected to go up from next month, starting April 1, 2018. Uh, the toll rate for single trip is expected to go up by 10, and the daily passes are expected to be costlier by rupees 20. Five. The company backed this project back in the last year with a one-time upfront payment of around 330 uh, crore. If you look at the financial picture of the company, uh, the top line and the operational performance on nine monthly basis have seen some decline. However, the adjusted net profit of the company has come from lost to profit situation on account of lower depreciation and a lower finance cost. Back to you guys. Time to look at the commodity space with me, Jayesh Khilnani. Starting off with uh, oil prices uh, that are trading lower for the third consecutive day. Now, uh, overnight, uh, we saw that uh, WTI slipped more than 1.6% from the day's high uh, after a surprise inventory data report uh, by API. Uh, so, API is likely to report uh, an inventory buildup of uh, nearly 5.3 million barrels for last week, uh, which is uh, much higher than what the Bloomberg survey of uh, 9 lakh barrels was uh, estimating. Moving on to the base metal space, uh, the index itself uh, snapped its three-day losing streak and ended about uh, three-tenths of a percent in the green. Uh, all the metals except for aluminium uh, were in the green as well, uh, with aluminium losing about uh, three-tenths of a percent uh, and the other base metals gained anywhere from one-tenth to seven-tenths of a percent. Now, as far as individual base metal news is concerned, uh, we have been seeing that uh, global copper inventory has been rising to the record high uh, amid uh, you know, demand supply concerns, as well as uh, the nickel market is actually eyeing uh, Philippines as the mine reviews have got delayed once again. Remember that earlier uh, 26 mines in the Philippines had been ordered to shut down uh, and uh, nickel market traders are actually waiting for uh, a decision on those. Uh, shifting focus to the precious metal space, uh, we, we have seen that uh, gold has stabilized near the 1350 mark on account of uh, the dollar index which is now trading below the key 90 level. SK Consumer Healthcare has said that uh, the parent company will uh, begin a strategic review of the India business. That is, its 72.45% uh, shareholding in the Indian subsidiary Horlicks and other products. Uh, so, uh, the parent company made this announcement during India trading hours, but uh, uh, the Indian subsidiary made this announcement post market hours. So, let's see how that reacts today. Reliance Industries has said that they will sell select shale assets in US for $100 million. You also have Indoco Remedies. Uh, now, a negative development on that counter. They've received seven observations from the UK drug regulator for its Goa plant, of which three are said to be critical and four major. So, we could see uh, quite a bit of a, a negative reaction on that counter. Bansali Engineering uh, is another uh, company to watch out for. They said that they've cleared all outstanding dues amounting to 216 crores. You have Avanti Feeds, which has started commercial production of the additional shrimp feed capacity at the Andhra plant. Also, a couple of names on the back of uh, deal wins. First off, you have Majesco, where its U.S. subsidiary has received a contract for billing software from a large uh, a global insurer, so watch out for that name. We're also watching out for Tejas Networks. They've received an expansion order of 336 crores from BSNL, but uh, they have warned that the FI 18 revenues could drop due to delay in receiving large orders. So you could actually see a negative reaction on this one. 
We're also watching out for Sickle Logistics, where its joint venture has won a long-term contract from uh, DVC. That's a, a contract with an estimated revenue of um, 10,000 crores over a 20-year period. That is uh, going to its JV. Its share of the JV is about 51%. And finally, we're tracking Karnataka Bank on the back of a bulk deal where Bhatina Reddy bought 0.6% stake yesterday, uh, where the seller was GM Financial. But watch out for all these names in trade today. Okay, the big deal is finally over. Fortis Healthcare and Manipal Hospital, the deal is done. So let's take a look at what happened with the deal. It's a two-part deal. Uh, the first part will include that Fortis Healthcare business, hospital, they will consolidate all the hospital business under Fortis uh, La Femme, which is one of the group companies. Post that, uh, this uh, entire transaction will mean that uh, the entire hospital business will be demerged from the existing Fortis Healthcare. Post that, what will happen is that there will be a merger between Fortis Healthcare hospital business and the Manipal health hospital business so the ratio that they've given is 100 shares of fortis will get you 10.83 shares of manipal health shares now post that what will happen is that uh, fortis was supposed to acquire the rht shareholding that is what manipal health will do and they will infuse funds for that and finally what we'll do is what will happen is that manipal hospital will have a reverse merger onto the uh, with the uh, fortis healthcare and that will be listed on the stock exchanges so this is how the entire deal will work now the second part of the deal is where srl so uh, Fortis Malar is the company in which there will be an open offer uh, for it's a listed company. So because of change of management, there will be an open offer there. Now, as far as SRL is concerned, for Max uh, Manipal will purchase 20% stake in the company for 720 crores, which is valuing the entire company at 3600 crores. And what will happen is uh, they're looking to acquire the balance 30% uh, stake to get a majority stake in the company, and they are talking to a lot of investors to get that. Now, how does this entire SRL deal work? It deal values SRL at 3600 crores most of the analysts i spoke to have a valuation in excess are valuing srl at a valuation in excess of 4000 crores the ebitda ev to ebitda is 21.5 times this is more expensive than thyrocare uh, but less expensive as far as dr lal's is concerned <coughs> so this is how srl is there now how will the entire public shareholding work so this is what is currently in which public owns 99.2 percent stake and they own almost uh, they own stake in srl fully now what happens as far as the manipal deal is concerned post the manipal deal manipal and fortis will have 41 percent as investors uh, the promoters that is the manipal hospital group will have 30 percent stake and TPG capital will have 21 percent stake and they will own 100 percent of RHT assets so this is how the entire transaction will work and they will plan to own 50.9 percent stake in SRL limited so this is how the entire transaction will work in now by the numbers uh, Fortis is strong in North India Manipal is strong in South India uh, they have 34 beds here and on Manipal is 11 and as far as the number of operational beds are concerned uh, 4600 compared to 2900 crores so Fortis is larger in every scale for Manipal now presence what will the combined entity have a pan india presence 45 hospitals and a 7658 number of beds is something that we will, they will have as far as financial is concerned uh, revenues is almost double margins is much lower for fortis because of the rht deal and debt is pretty much similar so on a valuation fight fortis is much uh, 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 if you're looking at the valuation they have valued manipal at a much higher multiple now if you're seeing the the combined entity will have a 5200 crore revenue ebitda margin of 14 and 3600 crores of debt on the combined entity. Now, if you're looking at uh, uh, the combined entity, it will be the largest hospital by EBITDA as well as revenue, second largest in terms of the operational beds and number of hospitals, and third in terms of the operational metrics, that is the average length of stay, average revenue, and occupancy. So this is what the combined entity will have. Now, EV to EBITDA, this is important. On the current valuation, Fortis hospitals are, made, are valued at 20 times, while Manipal is at 29 times. So Manipal is valued at a much expensive rate, uh, despite the fact that their revenues are half of Fortis at this point of time. Uh, so this is the valuation picture. Now, what works for Fortis and Manipal together is the fact that you know combined entity will be India's largest hospital chain. Apart from it, the second thing that works is that Manipal has a very strong track record in operating a lot of these assets and <clears throat> it will have a pan India presence uh, that is something that is positive now what is does not work and is concerning is the fact that there is no open offer for Fortis shareholders they are they are removing a bus business and selling it off so it's more like a slump sale that has happened deal valuations are not mentioned uh, SRL is valued at a much lower valuation and there's no clarity on the liabilities if any comes on the SS so probably if that comes whether it will be the Fortis shareholders or the Manipal shareholders that will get that that is not not there and the balance sheet for Fortis is not strong enough to buy 
the RSG. That is why Manipal has bought it and they are putting in their valuations uh, on, the, on the table. So that is the entire deal that works. So overall, if you're looking at it, I spoke to a lot of analysts. It seems that, you know, the deal at this point of time is not in favor of the Firefortis minority shareholders. In these sort of times, many times in the past, you know, given that uh, I've been in the stock markets for the last 25 years, you know, we have, so nothing really moves us that uh, badly, you know, you, we are made of, uh, you know, we don't have nerves of steel, we have nerves of titanium, <laughs> okay, so uh, nothing really shakes us. So it's a part of an ongoing correction, we'll see some more correction maybe, you know, people uh, with, uh, um, with some, you know, if they excesses on the downside, there will be excesses on the, if they excesses on the upside, there will be excesses on the downside. We saw excesses on the upside at 11,000 something on the Nifty, you know, clearly these were excesses. Now we are approaching a situation where there are excesses getting created on the downside. So, you know, you know, these are how tops and bottoms are made, you know, so currently the base formation is underway, you know, maybe it will fall another 5% or thereabouts, thereby, you know, you'll see far more rationality come through in the market because earnings are picking up and the ultimate truth in the markets and stocks are earnings you know p multiples are nobody is are in nobody's hands you know they were not in anybody's hands when the markets were going up they are not in anybody's hands when the markets are you have got to actually factor in all the negatives at a particular price level and i mean i think we are somewhere closer to the bottom that's how i would look at it nothing to get very panicky about all these things well, that's good to hear. But just wondering, Manish, it's a thousand point fall that we've seen from the highs. You are saying that this is excessive? I mean, thousand points on the large cap. Hmm. But if you were to see the broader markets, there are stocks which have fallen 20, 30, 40, 50 percent. I mean, these are clearly excesses on the downside. Don't really think that there was so much of froth in many of the established marquee names. Yes, they have gone through multiple corrections, like P multiple corrections. Nothing to warrant this sort of a panic. I think it's got to do with the negative flows that have come through from RBI's front on account of the PSUs, and liquidity issues, and so on and so forth. But my personal sense is that we are, you know, creating excesses on the negative side. So, you know, these sort of things really won't last too long. You know, if the earnings growth is there and capital will always chase growth, we are approaching that sort of a situation currently. The government's GST collection have marginally fallen to 85,174 crore rupees for the month of February after stabilizing in the 86,000 crore rupee range for in the month of December and January. About 59 lakh returns were about 59 lakh GST or 3B returns were filed for the month of February, which were about 2 lakh more as compared to the previous month. GST collected in the various heads was 14,945 crore rupees was collected in CGST, which is the center's share of uh, GST, and uh, which after the uh, IGST settlement went up to 27,085 crore rupees. State's share of GST was about 20,456 crore rupees, and which went up to 33,880 crore rupees after the IGST settlement. About 7,100 about 7,317 crore rupees was collected as compensation says. The, according to experts, the primary reason for uh, for the collections to have fallen is that uh, is that uh, assessees also face a, a, a burden of direct tax liabilities like the advance tax and TDS, which is collected, which has to be uh, paid at the end of the financial year. Hindustan Aeronautics will be listing on the exchanges today. Now, the company had raised close to 4,088 crore rupees and had issued shares at the lower end of the price band, that is 1,215. Now, the IPO was just subscribed with the total subscription coming at 0.99 times, with most of the demand coming in from the QIB portion that was subscribed nearly 1.73 times. Now, from this QIB portion, LIC was the major buyer. Now, the government owned insurance company bought 7% stake in Hindustan Aeronautics. Now, the total issue size of Hindustan Aeronautics was close to 4,080. 4, Crore rupees of which LIC subscribed for 2,844 crore rupees of shares. That is close to 70% of the offer. Now, the street is expecting the shares to list at, at, at flat. Uh, so, at, let's see how the valuation would stack up. At the issue price of 1,215, the market capitalization would be close to 40,600 crore rupees. FY17 price to earnings would be 15.5. 
market cap to sales would be 2.3 and EBITDA beta would be 8.9. Now, if the shares list at a discount of 50 rupees, then the market capitalization would be close to 39,000 crore rupees. Price to earnings would be 14.8, market cap to sales 2.2, and EBITDA beta would be 8.4. Now, if it lists at a premium of 50 rupees, then the market capitalization would cross 42,000 crore rupees. Price to earnings would be 16.1, market cap to sales would be 2.4, and EBITDA beta would be 9.4. Now, if you say Hindustan Aeronautics is not only the largest government owned defense company but it is also the 39th largest aerospace company in the world. Now the order book of the company is close to 68,400 crore rupees which gives a good revenue visibility for the next three years. Now apart from this the company also has extra orders, has submitted proposal for uh, aircrafts and helicopters which are worth around 64,500 crore rupees. Now it's a Navratna status company with five manufacturing units located across India. Now the company is not only manufactures but also designs, develops and repairs aircrafts, helicopters and aero engines. Now over the years the company's major client is the Indian Armed Forces but the company has also exported to countries like Nepal, Afghanistan, Maldives and Mauritius but exports still form a very small part of its total revenue. Now the company has been generating mo majority part of its revenue from sale of products but see if you see over the years the share of service revenue has been increasing from 21% in FI15 it has now increased to 40% for the first half of financial year 2018. Now the company does not have any peers in India. So if you see the financials of the company, the company's revenue, net profit and EBITDA grew at a compounded annual growth rate of 7%, 63% and 26% over FI15 to FI17. Now the reason behind such a high growth for ne uh, net profit and EBITDA is because there was a significant drop in provisions, tax expense and a small drop in the raw material cost. On the balance sheet side, if you see the company is a debt-free company with a total cash of more than 11,600 crore rupees on its books. Now, the book value per share of the company is close to 3 87 rupees and the cash value per share is 350 rupees per share. Lastly, in the return ratio side, the return on equity for FI17 was close to 21%, return on capital employees was 10% and return on asset was 5% for the financial year 2017. Let's also have a look at uh, some of the stocks that would be in action based on yesterday's uh, delivery, buying and selling. Starting off with Cummins India. Now that was down about 3.5% uh, in trade and saw delivery selling of 131 crores. The delivery volume uh, you know, was uh, surged about uh, three times at nearly 18.5 lakh shares as compared to its five-day average. And the total volume surged more than three times at nearly 22 lakh shares as compared to its five-day average. Second stock to watch out for, that would be India Bulls Housing Finance. Now that was up about uh, three and a half percent in trade and saw delivery buying of more than 200 crores. The delivery volume surged nearly 80 percent at about 18 lakh shares as compared to its five day average and the total volume surged uh, just about 67 percent at nearly 27 lakh shares as compared to its five day average. Last and final stock to watch out for that would be Hindalco. Now that was up about uh, four percent in trade and saw delivery buying of more than uh, 150 crores. The delivery volume surged 60 percent at nearly 79 lakh shares as compared to its five day average and the total volume uh, shot up 40 percent at nearly 1.6 crore shares as compared to its five day average. It's not common uh, for someone to start sailing before you start driving and when you sail you control your boat on your own but you also control it against wind, tides, water, many different elements and all natural elements for that matter. So that helps you a lot in decision making and controlling elements which are different and beyond your control makes you think a lot, makes you react differently and helps you make decisions a lot better as you grow. That's one of the best things I've experienced in sailing and I'm glad kids are taking it up. I'm currently 12 years old and I started sailing when I was 9 years old. I, I uh, like sailing because in, while I do sailing I feel it helps me to focus more in studies and other sports. I even like it because it gives me a peace of mind. When he was around 10 years, he started sailing. Actually, my husband is a naval officer, so he was posted in NDA. That is how my son also picked up sailing. I'm 12 years old. I'm in sixth standard. I started sailing, let's say, last year. The fact that I've I tried many sports before, tennis, table tennis, badminton. I never felt happy while doing the sport. I, I always feared competition. Now I enjoy competition and I finally found out what I really want to do. I'm 12 years old and I'm going to 8th grade. My dad put me in this, in this sailing camp and all that stuff. I was not initially interested in stuff. 
Then slowly, I, I, the, in, the interest in, initiated in me, and then I just started sailing. I feel really good because um, at first, I didn't think that I could have won the championship. I thought that I would be second or third. Then after the first uh, day, I, I did really good. So I got a, I got self confidence and I decided that I could I could even do better the other days. Well, that's clearly lots to talk about over the course of the day before you start your long weekend and you'll find all the live market action right here on Bloomberg Quint Live. There are also a few stories that you should consider reading on the website, that's BloombergQuint.com. First up, the Central Board of Direct Taxes today extended the deadline for linking the permanent account number of PAN with Aadhaar to June 30. Watch out for the SEBI board meeting today. The markets regulator is set to discuss measures ranging from strengthening the ALGO trading framework, amending norms for companies undergoing bankruptcy proceedings and increasing a regulatory framework on auditors. Well, that's all you need to know going into trade today. Up next is Indian Open and it will take you through market open. Thanks so much for watching. This is Bloomberg Quinn.